next topic is very interesting. Mentors versus coaches. Who can add more value to the startup journey? And uh, I'll invite Aya Brovere to tell more about it and uh, to this discussion. Please. Yes, so, uh, so yes, today uh, we are addressing the topic of mentors and coaches because oftentimes uh, the startup uh, gets a chance uh, to engage with the mentor or the coach. How to get most of it? Uh, you know, what is it that mentors and coaches offer? And for that reason, uh, we have invited uh, two panelists uh, who are... Uh, from the startup world in some way, who have engaged with the startups in the role of mentor and coach. So first, uh, joining me here is uh, Zev uh, Strutsovsky, who is co-founder of Venture Faculty, and who is, in fact, by his work, creating an ecosystem, uh, helping uh, especially startups in ad uh, tech and fintech. And he's uh, here more in the corner representing the mentor. And uh, with us also, not exactly here, but virtually here, is Evia. Uh, uh, Evia uh, is um, a um, coach with a lot of experience in coaching. She's been coaching since 2009. And uh, she also has experience in IT, marketing, finance, and has been on a startup journey herself. But I will uh, ask my first question to uh, Zev, who is actually here with me today. Uh, so I will ask you, so what is the purpose of mentor uh, in, the, in the startup? Hi, so first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me to participate in this event and, uh, and I hope I will be able to, 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 uh, to, to share my experience and uh, starting with this, so basically if we look at a mentor, a mentor is a person who provides his uh, personal experience or experience that he heard from other, f other friends or from colleagues, partners uh, in his life of work. So when uh, you mentor a startup, basically you help them, uh, the newcomers especially, that they're not from this world, help them to uh, look at the framework correctly, to review the notions and the common knowledge that is known to me already, to give it to them so they could faster create their startup and move uh, forward. That's that's, yeah, that's from the mentor standpoint. Yeah. Now I will ask Evie, from the coach's standpoint, uh, what is the purpose of uh, having a coach for a startup? So Evie Vashchenko, uh, our coach, would be best suited to answer that. Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be able to speak with you, and I'm sorry that I didn't have possibility to join you in, uh, in real. Um, what uh, coach can help startup and startup founder with it's uh, to have a thinking uh, stimulate thinking which is needed to understand uh, like what's the best way to move forward uh, why i'm here why i'm doing this uh, what are my main objectives so it's uh, everything which uh, might be helpful to understand how to proceed with I'm here, I'm for this wonderful startup journey. So what I need to do, um, what uh, I need to commit to, am I ready to commit it? So everything uh, to think about and coaches asking questions which uh, help to think, broaden the thinking process and also challenges sometimes some assumptions. Okay, very good. Uh, I will ask uh, our mentor. So uh, I wonder what are the exact benefits of working with a mentor from a, from a startup standpoint? Yes, so as I said, uh, mostly people who join the startup community or the startup ecosystem are new to the industry. So uh, basically what uh, the benefit for me is that I tell them where, is it, uh, where to go or not to go, where are the obstacles, where are the mistakes that they can make. And, uh, and this way they are, again, progress faster and uh, move forward. And basically what I'm trying to say is the knowledge that I have, I'm sharing with this uh, startup, the, un, uh, the young entrepreneurs. And, uh, and, and as long as they listen, they uh, get the, the, the knowledge, uh, what's needed. Okay, very good. Uh, I wonder, Evie, what would you say are the main benefits uh, for the startup from working uh, with a coach? Uh, I would say coach uh, will help uh, to answer questions, uh, 
like what I need to be doing. Uh, do I have all the information I need? If I don't have some information, what I need to find out? And uh, sometimes also a coach can, uh, by asking questions and helping to think, uh, help understand what kind of mentor I should look for, uh, like to, um, to be helpful on my startup journey. Okay, that's a good uh, turn. Uh, I wonder, uh, though, uh, we are all quite time poor or time pressured as startups. And um, how, uh, how would you say, how much time would it take for, uh, how many sessions for a, a mentor a relationship to be fruitful, to bring results? So, uh, first of all, I want to say it's a case by case for each startup, but uh, basically, it, as uh, execution of a startup or the progress of the startup is a long term uh, process, it's not a one day issue. It can take two, three, four, five years till you reach your uh, level that you expect to go. But uh, there are stages that you uh, go over, for example, from putting the idea to, to the paper, then to create the pitch deck, then to go to the investors. And each stage, of course, the mentor can help uh, in developing the stage and make it more uh, ideal in the, for the project that they're trying to create. Uh, if the mentor has no experience in uh, attracting funds, so he probably in some stage cannot help. But at a later stage, where, for example, when they want to grow, go to, to grow in the United States and the mentor has this experience, of course, they return to him and, uh, and ask for the advice to receive for this. So it can be uh, both short-term and long-term relationship. Yes, yes. Okay, Evie, what would you say about coaching in startup? Uh, how many sessions, how much time does it take to have some results? I would say it depends. It depends what is the question uh, the startup founder comes uh, to the coach with. Uh, sometimes one session can be completely enough because there is a question uh, which needs to be answered, which uh, startup founder to need to think about. And when the session ends, there are very clear answers and um, they are completely clear what they need to do next. And then one session is enough. Uh, sometimes uh, there are more sessions, uh, maybe four, five, six. Uh, it completely depends on the process and what the startup founder is working on. Uh, sometimes I have had experience when um, in uh, the journey of startup development, uh, there are many obstacles and uh, many things can happen and everything changes fast. And startup founder can start lose confidence. And then the coach can help to regain this competence, confidence to see all the competence they're having, all the knowledge, all the things they need to do. And uh, with all this uh, regain confidence, they just move forward. Sometimes it can require a little bit longer time, sometimes okay. short is enough. I see. So your answer is it depends. Uh, uh, anyway, thank you for that. And uh, now my question is, uh, about uh, maybe you can share some uh, success story for your, from your experience because mm -hmm. Zev, I know you've been working for quite a while as a mentor. Uh, just share some experience where you've seen this relationship work well and work well yeah. for the startup. So uh, the experience I, I can share uh, is, uh, is uh, when I was a mentor in uh, New Door. It's a social, uh, uh, social responsible accelerator and uh, one of the uh, uh, participants, he cho chose me as a mentor and he wanted to create a museum for the blinds. It's called Experience for the Blinds. And uh, it was during the COVID time, it started, he started this process in 2020. And uh, we, we sat many times together and to try to find a way how to create the business plan, first of all, how to set up the prices. Then uh, afterwards, as you said, as I said, the experience and advice that I had uh, to give him, I forgot to say from the beginning, he, this person was not from the entrepreneurship uh, industry. He was an IT, IT employee in a big IT company and he has n had no idea what is a business. And uh, the first thing I had to teach him is first of all, I had to calculate how much you want to earn. The second type of when he tried to, for example, to rent the premises, he said, what should be written in the lease agreement? And those are simple questions which uh, I can help uh, as a mentor or a mentor can help and answer. Uh, for the for the person not to make a mistake so and at the end of the day this business is now working and uh, he's happy and uh, all is great uh, from from your side 
Well, uh, happy to hear, yeah, about that um, uh, social, more social yeah. entrepreneurship that you've contributed to. Evie, can you share a success story from your own uh, coach's experience? Of course. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was working with a startup CEO, founder of the startup, and the CEO had a question um, of how to um, create a better relationship with a technical team because there was some pressure growing, which was actually um, kind of hindering uh, further development. And the uh, CEO wasn't sure how to better build com communication, how to build this relationship with technical team, because there were like very big age difference, there were cultural differences. And the um, uh, coaching process went on for half a year. And during this time, CEO very um, successfully built the relationship with the technical team. And currently, startup is uh, successfully developing and growing in multiple countries. That's, uh, that's also a very valuable experience. I wonder now, we, we talked about the benefits for the startup. We talked about the purpose. But I wonder what is required of a startup? for the relationship to be successful with the mentor? What does the startup need to bring or what attitude? Mm -hmm. What would you say is necessary from a startup? So in short, in one, in two words is to listen, basically. But, uh, but overall, of course, to come open-minded because uh, uh, yes, I have my experience. I have, uh, the mentor has its own experience and uh, he's trying to put, uh, to give it this experience and to see how the, that the team uses this experience, but not all. But the team itself needs to uh, uh, take this experience and adjust it to their startup because each startup is unique, each uh, business is unique, and uh, they need to adjust all of the advices that they get uh, and, uh, and use the advices for their own advantage at the end of the day. Okay. Listen. The startup needs to listen. Okay, very good. Uh, Evia, what would you say? What is required of a, of a startup founder or founder's team uh, to be able to benefit from relationship with coach? Uh, I would say it's first honesty and openness. So to be honest about uh, what are the challenges, what are the feelings around those challenges, what's difficult for them. And openness uh, to rethink uh, uh, what's happening uh, to the readiness to have like different view readiness to be challenged uh, sometimes the questions coach ask uh, they are not so nice for startup founders and sometimes uh, like startup founder might come to the coach to get those questions which sometimes we know already those questions but we just uh, don't have uh, like courage to ask ourselves and then coach asks those questions, so it's readiness to be challenged and readiness to also make some decisions after. Okay. Uh, Evie, I will also ask you the next question. Uh, I know, I happen to know that you have been on a startup journey yourself, that you have a startup, uh, that uh, it's an ongoing thing. And uh, I just want to ask you about that journey from your perspective. Uh, how has it been? Mm. Okay, but uh, can I clarify the question? Uh, you mean how has it been the journey as such or journey uh, related to coaching and mentoring? Uh, first of all, a little bit about the journey itself, what startup it is, and then I will ask you about coaching and mentoring. Okay, okay great. Um, it's a startup uh, called Veritasel. It's a medical startup. Uh, we are working in the field of cell therapy. Uh, skin regeneration and our solution is for uh, curing large area burns. So it's uh, completely mm, uh, deep technology based uh, and doing with the uh, human body. Um, the journey has been uh, both successful and challenging. It has been three years by now. Uh, we have had our highs and our downs and um, we are currently making uh, like small steps forward. Uh, because the pandemic has impacted us quite uh, uh, a lot and slowed down a lot of processes for us because we are closely related to hospitals. We have to work with hospitals and everyone knows what's happening now. Yeah, I wonder on this journey, have you had a coach or have you wished you had a coach? 
Uh, we didn't have a coach, uh, but wished for, uh, because sometimes when there were some challenges in team and we needed to think, I'm actually was playing the role of the coach for our team. And sometimes it was quite difficult for me because I had to stay quite uh, like, um, uh, quite independent from the situation to be able to ask the questions quite neutral. And at the same time, I was part of the team, I was part of the process, so this neutrality was quite difficult for me. And uh, did you have, at any point in that journey, did you have a mentor? Uh, yes, we had, we still have. Currently, we have three mentors and in different fields and areas, uh, clinical and industry side. And we have had, uh, I think we had uh, like four or five more mentors during those three years. And each of them were very valuable for us. Okay, that's uh, very good. Now I will ask Zev, I know you are part of the startup ecosystem for quite a while. You are contributing to building that ecosystem with your venture faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell a bit about your uh, experience, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, with, with the startup ecosystem in Latvia and how mm -hmm. it works? Yes, of course. Uh, so I myself joined the startup ecosystem several years ago. I wasn't uh, there. I was more from the conservative industry. But uh, the push that gave me to join this uh, ecosystem, the startup ecosystem, is mainly for someone to thank, to, sort of to show that uh, the Latvian government and uh, organization like Ministry of Economics and uh, LIA are doing a great job for the past years uh, in changing the regulations and uh, creating the right infrastructures and systems uh, to encourage more and more people to join the, to join the ecosystem, to join the industry. Uh, for example, the startup visa or the startup laws that were uh, created, the magnetic incubators, uh, which is also by, run by ILIA, and, uh, and which creates uh, and created the accelerators, the funds, and which there is an improvement. Uh, if you look back, uh, there is a huge improvement, and also in the past year, etc. Of course, there is place for improvement. Uh, and the biggest uh, challenges I see today is to bring uh, foreigners to Latvia. Uh, for several reasons, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, we have some boundaries or obstacles uh, which need still to be worked on. Uh, I hope to see this part to be resolved in the future. Uh, yes, COVID a bit stops the movement of people, but still, uh, I hope uh, that uh, smart minds uh, with startup uh, energy will come to Latvia and uh, help, this, uh, help this ecosystem grow even faster. Okay. Well, let me bring the discussion a little bit back to the, the startup uh, that we're talking, the one that is considering uh, coaching or mentoring and, and, and cannot decide. Uh, I wonder, Evia, have you come across the cases or do you know of why uh, there would be cases that coaching is not useful for a startup or not working. I, I think the first uh, case when coaching will not be working when uh, the startup founder or the team is not ready for coaching. Uh, they don't want outsider to ask questions uh, which might be challenging for them. And this will be the first thing. Uh, also, um, as, I would say it will not work if people are not ready to change because coaching is very much about changing, changing our behaviors, changing our habits, our perceptions, our thinking mindset. So if we are not ready for that, coaching just doesn't work. So yeah, they have to want to change some things. Uh, as, as a mentor, Zef, what would you say? When is the, when is the situation when uh, when mentoring just doesn't work for a startup, when it's not doing anything for them? So uh, the, first, the first reason, and it's the simple reason, the mentor just doesn't have the right experience for this startup. He doesn't know what, what to advise. But the biggest limitation which I noticed, uh, even with myself in my experience, is the boundaries that the mentor has uh, because of his experience. Uh, as an example, the startup is looking to, be, to grow worldwide, become uh, the next social app or something like this. And, uh, and the mentor just don't have the belief in, uh, in such growth or in such uh, 
that, that the team will be able to reach such potential and he may discourage this team uh, to go and pursue their, their dream at the end of the day uh, because of his own restrictions or boundaries. Okay, and our discussion is nearing to the end and now I will ask you the, the key question that we, the, that we set into answer uh, at the beginning because I know both of you have diverse experiences, not just that role of maybe a coach or mentor. Well, in your own experience, and I'll start with you, Evia, in your own experience, uh, what would you say, uh, which one is better for a startup? Is it a coach or is it a mentor? Uh, I would say that startup uh, needs to have both. Uh, because uh, mentoring and coaching they addresses uh, quite different areas in startup development. Uh, coaching would be more about uh, relationships, uh, thinking processes, decision-making decision processes, so challenging uh, how people think, behave, uh, what they perceive. Uh, mentoring uh, will give more knowledge sharing and industry experience, experience of startup development, which uh, they cannot get anywhere else if they haven't had this experience themselves. So I would say that both are needed just for different reasons. Okay. Uh, Zev, what would you think? Uh, uh, what's the answer to this question? Would, uh, which one is more useful? Is it a coach or is it a mentor uh, on a startup journey? So uh, from uh, what I uh, know, uh, and the seed. So basically, in the beginning, uh, I believe more a coach is more important than a mentor in the beginning of the startup, uh, because most of the materials, most of the information, how to create, how to put your idea on the paper, how to create a pitch deck, is is a lot, a lot of information on the internet. The biggest challenge is to uh, make the team work together, uh, to to make uh, them connect with each other, to make the a communication uh, workflow and uh, to make it uh, uh, synchronized uh, and, and that, they, that the team understand that that's their work and they are motivated and they want to move forward. Afterwards, of course, they will arrive with the questions and then they will need to have the mentor who will answer their already case-by-case -case questions in, the, in relation to the field, if it's FinTech, if it's ad tech, if it's uh, any SaaS solutions, uh, or for example, to which uh, venture investor to go or not to go, but there are already specific questions. But in the beginning, you need to, uh, all of, in the beginning, the first months, the team is very motivated. After that, they have some, some small de de decline of this motivation because the work comes back, the, 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 the life is returning, and then you need to give them the next push uh, to overstep this uh, wall, and then they are already a success, will be a successful startup. Okay, that's, uh, that's also a great answer, depending on where they are uh, on this journey. Um, so both of you kind of said both roles are important. Now a question, a personal question to you. Well, uh, you have been a coach to startups. Can I ask you, Evia, is it a rewarding role? Can you, ha can you have personal rewards from uh, being a coach to a startup? Certainly, yes because it's a wonderful experience to see how startup develops, how team starts working better together, and how they make those next steps and achieve their goals. It's uh, really, it's both rewarding and humbling experience to be there and experience all this. Yeah, so Zev, I will also ask you this last question. Has it been a rewarding role and, and do, you, do you feel it is a rewarding role? Uh, Part being mentored. Yes, uh, of course, uh, it's a rewarding uh, because especially when you see that your advice uh, especially worked and that uh, and uh, the, it's helped the team to move forward and uh, and you enjoy every every time and people always come back to you not only for advice just to tell you thank you again and uh, like it's it you basically at some point you create a, a relationship with this team or this person and it's like. It's not for, not, I cannot say for life, but it's, it's a new friend, basically, at the end of the day. Okay, I think we are, uh, if there are many, uh, maybe questions from audience, let us know, but I think we've covered a lot of ground here.
was uh, it was definitely a pleasure and, and very interesting to to hear all of your answers. Um, I have a question for for myself. From your perspective, what's the what's the one most inspiring thing for the uh, uh, for the ones that just started out? What what's the, your advice that you would give them? For me, I just for both of you. I, I can start. So. Uh, person who just starting out, they have the idea, they are crazy about this idea, my first advice, take a piece of paper, write it down and try to understand what you are trying to create and, and who is the audience for this product or for this idea. Is it like, is this idea is a, can be a business in the future? That's the first advice. And what about you, Avi? Uh, my advice would be to create a vision uh, why you are doing this, what's important and how you see what is the result uh, you want to achieve in five years, where do you want to be. And to have this big picture uh, together with the answer to the question why you are doing this in front of you all the time. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, all these wonderful answers and this wonderful uh, discussion.